Okay, we're going to talk about the three Ds, debilitation, decay, and death. These don't sound like subjects that we uh, usually talk about at Genius Network. Yet, everyone here will have to deal with the three Ds eventually. Uh, Dr. Thaddeus, gala, like a gala, deals with them on a daily basis as a chiropractor and the medical director of complete care. He shows people how to reverse disease so that they can reduce or completely eliminate all medications. His topic is inflammation, defy death, debilitation, and decay. Give it up for Dr. T. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have a lot, we have, I think the, 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 the support of this, so we had 90 slides, so we got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm going to talk pretty quick. Today we're going to talk about how inflammation, the one campaign that will cost you $11 million to end your life. Who wants to learn about that? Anybody want to learn about how they can save or make $11 million? Come on, let's see your hands. Okay, great. So my name is Dr. Thad Gallagher. We're going to talk about inflammation. What is your score? Why should you care? What is it costing you and what does it cost? What is it coming from? And then ultimately how to reverse inflammation. Why am I up here talking to you today? Well, when, I, when my parents first moved up from Southern California, that's the property that they bought. No, no amenities, no electricity, no running water. And my parents put a tent on a piece of property. In the middle slide there, they bought a chainsaw and started building a house. My mother went from working from sunup to sundown to full disability which is what my life was like growing up. She, in her 40s, she was on pain so bad. She was, she was in pain so bad. She was on full disability and bedridden. I know a good day for her was she could go down and check the chickens. So it was the first and only time in her life that she thought the family would be better off without her. So that's what I grew up with. And when my brother and I would come home from school, there'd be a little placard that said there'd be a number on it. And depending on where that number was, was her pain scale and whether you could talk to mom or not that day. Well, fast forward. The, the physician said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. You're going to spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair. That's me in the pink. I know, very fashionable. Tearing out, we're, we're, we're sitting there tearing out the kitchen, getting ready for a wheelchair-type kitchen. So, of course, that was not the life that we wanted. She found someone that worked with her on how to reduce chronic inflammation when all the other doctors failed her. Now she's 67 years young. She's our lead health coach. She started running 5K races. Her physicians are amazed, and she's on zero medication. So does this, yes, a round of applause for my mother, my inspiration. Does this look like someone that should be in a wheelchair? Of course not. I, lo I love the middle picture. I think the dog looks more tired than she does. So, of course, you know, it's kind of like from zero to hero, wheelchair to uh, marathon runner. So w w why are we doing this? Well, that prompted me to go into work in natural health care to where we now we work with people to reverse chronic disease in one to eight months so they can reduce or completely eliminate all chronic medications or if you want to prevent or reverse disease. So because, of course, it takes a new perspective. You're never going to see commercials like this again. And, of course, 7-Up would go under if they ever ran an ad like this again. So we know traditional medicine thinks that we're born with too many bodies parts and under-medicated because they treat symptoms. If you step on a dog's tail and it barks, you don't put a muzzle on it. So getting to the root cause, we know inflammation is the driver. This could be pretty much any graph. It's diabetes, but we know we're getting sicker as a nation following mainstream advice. Because we know about in about 2002, the AHA and the CDC issued a joint statement saying that inflammation is the biggest driver of chronic disease, both short and long term. There's two types. A clinical acute inflammation is when you sprain your ankle. We're all familiar with that. But what we're talking about is subclinical. That's the lowest grade. It's a smoldering irritant that we all deal with, and that's what drives the disease process. So what is your inflammation score? If you're taking notes, write this down, HSCRP. How many people have ever heard of HSCRP, current clients not included? So about, maybe about 10%. HSCRP is considered the single best indicator for chronic low-grade inflammation, and we know that since about 2002, you should be having that tested because it's more important than cholesterol in predicting future chronic disease as well as heart disease. So here's a question. What percentage of heart attacks occur in people with normal cholesterol? 50% is absolutely right. Who said that? Wonderful. 50%. You can quiz your physician on that. You can look up line because we know that in the other 50% and pretty much about 90% of all heart attacks occur with people with chronic low-grade inflammation. Like we've learned in some of these previous uh, talks that it starts very young. And why are we talking about this? Because, of course, you are your biggest asset. So quiz your physician. Why should you care? Because inflammation drives all chronic diseases, and it's a big component, whether it's acne, allergies, asthma, as uh, cancer, chronic fatigue, weight gain, of course, and low mental clarity and low cognition. So we know that it drives Alzheimer's, et cetera. So what is inflammation costing you? Well, we know that the U.S. spends almost the largest amount on health care, and we're one of, one of the, the worst. And we know that just by the time you are... Uh, by, by the time that you retire, you spent $250,000 out of pocket. So there's your, your $125,000 uh, uh, $250, idea, Joe. But what are the total costs of inflammation and inflammatory diseases? Well, we know surgeries, and the average American has seven to nine surgeries. So what's it cost you to miss a day of work? Or what's it cost you to miss a day with your family or quality of life? 
Because we know that inflammation drives not only the quality, but the quantity of life that you have. And of course, dying prematurely, we know that if you do reduce inflammation, you extend your life. So there are 15 years of 25K uh, groups times your 250,000, that's 11. Uh, there's your 11 million right there. But ultimately, what is a day worth to you? in terms of loss productivity, not only for you, but for your team. I know a lot of us measure quarterly performance, daily performance, but where are you in terms of monitoring yourself and your internal performance and your internal health? Because we know that we're, and we get, when you get into retirement, a lot of financial advisors say, well, a third of your retirement is related to, uh, the first third is spending your money on enjoying things that you want to do, and the last two thirds is spending it on health care. So if you're spending the last two thirds of your, of your retirement dollars on healthcare, how's your quality of life? And we know that those are inflammatory related diseases. So are you spending your health to gain wealth, only then to turn around and spend your wealth to reclaim your health. Well, where does it come from? Well, of course, there's no secret here about who is healthier. I know Homer, he's, uh, he's not the epitome of health. His wife is having to vacuum him to keep him healthy. So a couple of things that would cause inflammation, of course, this young child that sadly is inflamed because we know as a nation, the obesity rates are getting higher and higher. That's one of the biggest sources. This is the obesity rate started in 1986. You can see that we have to add in new categories in 91, 92 or 98, and 2000. 2006, and the last blue state, gone. So we know that we are getting sicker as a nation following mainstream advice. So there's a term called genetic discordance uh, that you wouldn't feed your line a bale of hay and you wouldn't feed your horse a steak. So if this looks really good to you, you're inflamed. So what is the optimal diet to reverse inflammation? Is, is there an alternative? Well, we know that about 72% of our calories that we consume promote inflammation. 72% of what you put in your mouth is promoting inflammation. So what is it, one of the biggest ones? Well, dairy, I would agree that is one of the biggest inflammatories. It's a poor source of calcium, vitamin D, protein. It actually raises your insulin. There's some suggestions that the hormones will actually not be destroyed by heat, cooking, or pasteurization, or digestion, and can be absorbed into the bloodstream, potentially disrupting human physiology. And we know that uh, lactose intolerance, just for vitamin D, I know a lot of people say, oh, I get my, my vitamin D from my milk. Well, how many gallons of milk would you have to drink to get the same amount of 20 minutes in the sun? Any guesses? Well, of course, because it's the highest one up there, right? Good job. So we know that just vitamin D, by, by getting the proper vitamin D levels, you can reduce your risk of all cancers combined because it reduces your inflammation and, and ta uh, uh, cell gap, tight junctions, et cetera, by 77%. So just getting your vitamin D levels appropriate because we know that these foods, well, have you ever tried to approach a wild animal or thought about milking it? So we know that these foods, dairy, cannot be consumed on a regular basis because it promotes inflammation. How many people have heard of gluten? Raise your hand if you've heard of gluten. So we know that gluten is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to grains because we know grains contain all of these other inflammatory issues in there and they're indigestible in the raw form, which is why you see corn the next morning. So for those of you that are chemical buffs, you can go ahead and memorize this. At the bottom, those are the chemicals that drive disease. So of course, I don't expect anyone to memorize this, but that's where medications work is at the bottom of the slide. At the top of the slide, you see where it says grains, flowers, corn, seeds, seeds, oils, etc. arachidonic acid. That's exactly, you're eating yourself into inflammation when you eat those foods because this, this slide is actually designed and put out by pharmacology companies that, that understand this, which is why they make millions. So people say, yeah, but I eat, I eat pretty healthy, Dr. Gallon. I say, well, if that was the case, you wouldn't be talking to me or on medications. So let's talk about how moderation doesn't work. Because if you eat one bowl of Cheerios, you need to eat 21 salads to balance out the inflammation in one bowl of Cheerios. What about bacon? I know I'm probably breaking a lot of hearts here. 30 salads. What about medium serving of fries, 55 salads, a serving of chips, 75 salads, two eggs, 100 salads. Now, that's not omega-3 eggs, that's regular eggs. And of course, if you have a wonderful soybean oil uh, dressing, you need 256 salads to balance out the inflammation. So add up one day. Of course, when you put all that together, we're going to be at 537 salads, and then we didn't even make it to dinner yet. So that's to reduce your inflammation. That shows you how quickly you can promote disease in your body if you're not careful. So we know that grains, dairy, because those are the issue, those are the big ones. There's a whole list of other ones out there, but those are some of the biggest offenders because to defy death, debilitation, decay, inflammation is not only one campaign that'll cost you 11 million, but it will cost you ultimately your life. Because ultimately, you know, what can you do to reverse inflammation? Why is it important? How much is a billion dollars worth to you if you only have minutes left on the clock? And how much are you spending for your time, energy, and focus on your number one asset? And where are you looking at for your numbers? So I encourage you to make the rest the best. So what to do? Well, here's some action steps. Pick one of the tests that I recommend. Have an HSCRP test done twice a year. Ideally, you want to be less than one. 
If you're one to three or above three, you better worry because that doubles your risk of Alzheimer's, future chronic diseases, and inflammatory conditions, arthritis, swelling, etc. Get a vitamin D test. Ideally, you want to be between 80 and 100, and you want to get that tested twice a year as well. Increase colorful vegetables, non-starchy, increase lean, wild game, and protein, and as well as supplements. Do that on what you can do to reverse inflammation, get your life back, and ultimately take care of your best asset, which is you and your health. Thank you very much. 